Good morning, everyone. I hope this finds you well and living your best life in Jesus Christ. Well, I suppose I'm now in good company. And by that, I mean I have joined the many millions of Christians, both past and present, who have been mocked for daring to share their faith with others. I shouldn't be surprised. As a teacher, teachers are often mocked by their students. And mockery of God and the things of God often seems to be the very nature of man. I mean, as mom used to remind me, they mocked Jesus as he died on the cross. They mocked all of the apostles at one time or another. And it happens all the time. It happens to politicians like Mike Pence or sports stars like Tim Tebow and actors like Chris Pratt and Tom Hanks. My goodness, they even mocked Mr. Rogers. So what makes me think I should get a free pass? But it still stings, even though I'm in good company. Well, here's the story. Shortly after the COVID-19 pandemic got into full swing around the middle or the end of March, I was contacted by a former student who was an extremely troubled young man who asked me some questions about what we as Advent Christians believe. His first question seemed sincere, and I thought that he was sincerely seeking, so I answered him with a brief summary of what we believe, and I also explained to him how it varied from the so-called norm of what I called popular Christian belief. This began a brief back and forth which rapidly became more of an attack as it progressed until it reached the point where I had to stop responding due to the increasingly hostile tone of his questions. It had become obvious as time went on that he was not really interested in learning about Christ, but rather simply wanting to argue about his favorite topics, such as all Christians are hypocrites, or uh, can you prove that God is real, or all religions are basically the same, and so forth. So after telling him that I would be happy to explain to him and counsel him, and but that I refused to argue religion. I told him I would pray for him and stop responding. That, as I said, that was about six months or so ago. Well, anyway, recently I was having a very pleasant online chat with another former student who uh, just went back to college, and she was about in the same age, when she revealed to me that the other gentleman, whom she knew, um, had gone on several social media sites and posted some of our conversation for other folks to comment on. <laughs> well, these 20-something peers of his wasted no time in stooping to the foulest of language and mockery, suggesting that I was not only a hypocrite, but that I was unintelligent, uh, arrogant, poorly educated, smelly, obese, and probably had bad hair. I, I don't know. But at one point, it was even suggested that since I had, quote, failed at being a teacher, unquote, I had obviously become a minister so as to feel superior to others. <laughs> of course, at the time, it made me angry. She, success she suggested I go to the site and demand that he take those posts down, and I did briefly consider doing exactly that until I realized that in the world of the Internet, that would simply give him more to post. <laughs> Besides, it truly does no good to try to bring wisdom to fools. Proverbs fifteen twelve reminds us a scoffer does not like to be reproved. He will not go to the wise. So after a few moments of anger and frankly hurt and thoughts of you know, different revenge, <laughs> being honest, I decided to give it to the Lord in prayer and let it go. I prayed for the young man that he find Christ and give up his earthly foolishness for God's wisdom. Then I thanked the Lord, this is going to sound strange, for being one of his reviled. What greater honor is there really to be unabashedly counted as one of his in this day and age? Separated and different enough from the world that your very presence and thoughts are something that the world wants to scorn. According to the scripture, when we do this, we're blessed, which means happy and favored. Psalms 1 verses 1 and 2 said, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law night and day. My dear brothers and sisters, it just brings to mind something that we often don't say that we should. 
we are in the last days. And that Bible says that these are times when men will simply not abide the things of God. It's sad, but it's true. It's been that way from the time Christ ascended into heaven, and it will be until he returns. 2 Peter 3, 3-7 3 tells us, Above all, you must understand in the last day scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. They will say, Where is this coming, he promised? Ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. But they bel- deliberately forget that long ago, by God's word, the heavens came into being and the earth was formed out of water and by water. By these waters also the world of that time was deluged and destroyed. By the same word, the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. Modern man thinks that what we believe is a myth. It's a fable. The idea that Christ will ever return is to them foolishness. They look for every opportunity to mock us, hurt us, revile us, and attempt to humiliate us, thinking they're so very superior when the Bible says that, frankly, they have just forgotten God. But God has not forgotten them. 1 Corinthians 3.18 Do not deceive yourself. If any of you think you are wise by the standards of this age, you should become fools so that you may become wise. And we also need to remember that in Galatians 6.7 it reminds us, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that he shall also reap. I pray every day for this young man that he see his worldly wisdom as just foolishness and that he repent and turn to the Lord. And I certainly hold him no malice. And I rejoice in the thought that I have been one of those honored to be mocked for my Lord. If I'm going to be a fool for Christ, I guess I need to be the best fool I can possibly be. I hope you make today a terrific day. I want you to know that I'm here if you need me. And I love you all.